glad to see the niggly rascally bitter cheap bitter come by some noble shame. I would exalt man, you know he brought me out of favour with my lady about a bear beating here. To anger him, we'll have the bear again, we fool him black and blue, shall I not, Sir Andrew? And we do not, it is pity of our lives. Here comes the little villain, how now, my meadow villain? Get you all three into the box tree. Melville is coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behaviour to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close in the name of Justine. Lie down there, for here comes the child that must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near that should she fancy, it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses it in a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows it. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening wrong. Oh, peace contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of it. How he jets under his advanced plume. It's my deck of soul beat the road. Jeez, I say. To be Count Malvolio. Oh, wrong. It's so him. It's so him. There is example for it. The lady of the straws, she married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Buy it, Mr. Jezebel. No, peace. Now he's deeply in low kind imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for so bold to hit him in the eye. Calling my officers about me in my branch velvet gown, having come from a day bed where I've left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! Oh, peace to us, I must be drunk for the past, yet peace. And then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place, as I what they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman, Toby. Oh, please, please. Seven of my people with a obedient start make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind up my watch or play with my some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies her to so me. So this fellow live. Oh, peace, peace, now, now. I extend my hand to him, thus quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. Does not Toby take your blow on the lips then? Okay. Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortune's having cast me on your knees. Give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Oh, scam! Hey, patience, we break the news of a plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. And you to buy for many do call me a fool. What employment have we here? Now is the look on the Oh, peace, and the spirit of was into her, we are allowed to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very seas, her use, and her teas, and thus she makes a great peace. It is in contempt of question, her hand. Her seas, her use, and her teas. Why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. By your leave. Wax, soft, and in pressure her lucrece with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. This to whom should this be? This wins him, live and all. Jove knows I love but who. Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. What follows, the was altered. No man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio. We may thought that he's now what a cold said. I may command where I adore, but silence like a lucrece knife with bloodless joke my heart doth go. M O A I doth sway my life. A Proustian riddle. An excellent wench, say I. M O A I doth sway my life. Nay, but first let me see, let me see, let me see. I think she pointed and how she dressed him. And with what wing he standing on checks at it. I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me, I serve her, she is my lady. Why, this is evident to any formal capacity, there is no obstruction in this. And the end, what should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me. Softly. M-O-A-I. We may go, but he's now the whole set. So to all pride on it, don't be as rank as a fox. M. Malvolio, M. Y. That begins my name. Didn't know. I say you will work it out. That curse, excellent at faults. M. But then there is no consonancy in the sequel that suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end. I hope. A or I can't make.
can cry O. Oh. And then I comes behind? I didn't I behind you. You will see more the trash under your heels than for just before you. M O A I. The simulation is not as the former, and yet to crush this a little, it would bow to me for every one of these letters are in my name. Stop here follows proofs. <clears throat> if this fall into thy hand revolve, in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness dressed upon them. Thy fate open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble staff and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commanded thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross gartered? I say, remember. Go to if thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee. The fortunate unhappy. Daylight and champion discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point device the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me for every reason excited to this. That my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of lace. She did praise my late pink cross guarded. And in this she manifests herself to my love and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. I thank my stars I am happy. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross guarded even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. Choose but know who I am. If thou entertains my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, dear my sweet, I put thee. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. I will not give a part of this bowl for a pension of thousands to be paid from thee, Sophie. I can marry this wench for this device. So could I too. As for no other dog, other just another jest. Nor I neither. Oh, here comes my noble girl catcher. Don't put thy foot on my neck. Or my neither. Shall I take my freedom and trade trip and become thy bond slave? In faith, or I either. Well, thou hast put him in such a dream, and the image of it leaves him, you must run mad. Nay, the same true. There's a work upon him. Like I'll come it with a midwife. If you will then see the proofs of the sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a colour she abhors, and cross garter a fashion she detests, and he will smile upon her, but she will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into an notable contempt. <coughs> if you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, the most excellent devil wit. I'll make one too. To him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is bought more off than begged or borrowed. I speak to lad. Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil, and fits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in very strange manner. He's sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship will best have some gods about you if you come, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. Go call him hither. Oh, I am as mad as he, if sad and very bad as he could be. <laughs> How now, Malvolio? Oh, sweet lady. Ho, uh ho. -huh. Smiles, thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad, lady, I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross guardering but what of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one, and please all. Why, how dost thou, ma'am? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though. 
yellow in my legs. It did come to his hands, and commands shall be executed. I think you do know the sweet Roman hand. No, I'll go to bed, no, William? To bed? I, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. God, comfort thee. Why dost thou smile so, and um, kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request, yes, Nightingale's answer doors. Why appear you with, before my lady with this ridiculous boldness? Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well writ. What means thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. What says thou? And some have greatness dressed upon them. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see thee cross gartered. Cross gartered? Go to, thou art made if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a servant still. Why, this is very little madness. Madam, the young gentleman, Count de Seniors, has returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where is my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I will not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh ho, do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. Now this concurs directly with the letter she sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, but she incites me to that in the letter. Cast thy humble sloth, says she. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity, and consequently sets down the manner how as a sad face, a reverend carriage, a slow tongue, and the habit of some sort of note, and so forth. I have lined her. But it is Job's doing, and Jove make me thankful. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. Why, everything adheres together that no drama of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Jove, not I, is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Where is he in the name of Sani? If all the devils of hell be drawn in middle, and he can himself possess it. Here he is. speak to him. Here he is. How's it with you, sir? How's it with you, man? Go off, I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off. Lo, oh, how hollow the being speaks within him. Did not I tell you? Said Toby, my lady prays you to have a care of him. Aha, does she so? Go to, go to, peace, peace, we must deal gently with him. How now, Malvolio, how is it with you? What man defy the devil? Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Not well, you, when you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it out of Pray God he be not bewitched. Carry his water to the wise woman. Mary, and it shall be done tomorrow morning, if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. Will you hold thy peace? You know what? You move him. Let me alone with him. No way but gentleness, gently, gently, the end is rough and will not be roughly used. Hey now, how now, my barcock? How dost thou talk? Sir! Hey, biddy, come with me. What man does not for gravity play cherry bit of satin? Hang him for Colia. Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, mates? No, I warrant you. He will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves, all your idle, shallow creatures. And I am not of your element. You shall no more hereafter. Is it possible? If this were played upon a stage now, I would condemn it as improbable fiction. His very genius hath taken the infection of the device, man. Nay, presume now, let the device take care and taint. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We shall carry it thus for a pleasure on his penance, and very past time tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on us in which time would bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a fine of madsman. But see, but see.
what art thou that usurps in this time of night, together with the fair and the warlike form in which the majesty of buried Denmark is sometimes marched by heaven? I charge thee to speak. Stay, illusion. If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which haply for knowing may avoid, thou speak. Or if there be any good thing to be done that may to thee do ease and grace to me, oh, speak. Stay, say and speak, stay. to see you well. Horatio! Oh, I did forget myself! Say, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Yes, I'll change that name with you, but what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift. Thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. When I went to meet my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I'd see that day. My father, methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. My lord, I think I saw him yesterday. So who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. I season your admiration for a while with an attentive ear till I may deliver this marvel to you. For God's sake, let me hear. In the death, fast, in the middle of the night, in those encounters, a figure like your father appears before me, and the solemn march goes slowly and stately whilst I, the steel, almost a jolly would have acted fear. I knew your father. These hands are not like. Did you not speak to it? Well, I did. But Hansel made it on. Yet, once me thought, it lifted up his head and did address, address itself to motion as it would speak. But even then, the morning cock crowed out. And with the sound of strong case away. It is very strange. You should live, my lord, it is true. And I did think it would done my duty to let you know that. I will watch tonight. The chance to walk again? I warrant it will. Duty to your honor. So mine article.
My good lord Hamlet. Well, God of mercy. <clears throat> Do you know me, my lord? Excellent. Well, you are a, uh, a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Well, then I were you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? I sir, for to be honest as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun, friend. Look to it. How say you by that? Still harping on my daughter. 
What do you lead, my load? Wads. Wads? Wads! What is the matter, my load? Between who? I mean the matter that you lead, my load. Oh, slander, sir. Well, there's a two of carouses here. That old man have grey beards. That their faces are wrinkled. And that the principal lack of weight to get them in worse than weak hands, altogether which I most powerfully and potently do believe, yet I do not see it honesty to have it thus set down. You, sir, could be as old as I am. If like a crab, you could go backwards. So, this be madness, yet there is method in it. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? And soon my grave. Indeed, that's out of there. I take my leave of you. You cannot take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all, except my life. Except my life. Except my life! To be that is the question. For it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing any of them to die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks the flesh is ending. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep. Perchance to dream I. There's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despise of the lost lady, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would these fardels bear and grunt and sweat under a weary life but for the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose bone no traveller returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to those we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all. The native hue of resolution is sickly though with the pale cast of thought. Enterprises of great pitch and moment. In this regard, the currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Walk in here and read on this book. She hopes such an exercise may call her your loneliness. I hear him coming. Soft you now. The fair Ophelia nymph, in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you well. Well. Well, my lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have hung it long to deliver. I pray me now receive them. No, not I never gave you all. My honoured lord, you know right well you did. And what then? 
was of so sweet breath composed, as made of things more rich their perfume lost. Take these again, to a noble mind, rich give us poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Are you honest? My lord. I did love you, once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me, I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I and myself am indifferent, honest, yet I could accuse me of such things. It were better my mother had not borne me. What should such fools as I do calling to heaven and earth be arid names all? Believe none of us. Where's your father? At home, my lord. <laughs> Let the doors be shut upon him that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. The only power to cure the God has given you one of <laughs> but you make yourselves another. You jade, you amble, well, you lisp. You nickname God's creatures. You make your wantonness, your ignorance. Go to, I'll have no more than ever made thee mad. I say, we shall have no more marriages. Those that are married, well, one shall live, the rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery, go. What a noble mind here at hand. The courtiers, soldiers, eyes, tongue, sword, the expectancy of robes and the fair skin, the glass of fashion and mold of form, the absurd. Of the old observers, quite, quite down. The unmatched form of that your blown youth blasted with ecstasy. Oh, who was this? To see what I've seen. See what I see. Now, Ophelia, you need not tell us what Lord Hamlet is dead. We heard it. Away, I do beseech you. Here he comes. <laughs> My Lord, I have news to tell you. I am news to tell you. When Rosium was an actor in Rome. The actors are come hide my lord. As buzz. Upon mine honor. Then came each actor on his ass. The best actors in the world. Either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral. My lord! My lord! Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. I, a dull, muddy metal rascal, peak like John of Dreams and pregnant of my cause and can say nothing! No. Not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? Why, well, I shall take it. For it cannot be but I a pigeon living and lark gold to make oppression bitter or ere this I should have fattened all the region kites with the slaves of a bloody! Bawdy villain! Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindness villain! Oh, vengeance! Why? What an ass am I? 
This is most brave that I, the son of the dear murdered, must first like a whore and pack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab. Scully, five hundred fall about my brains! I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play were by the very cunning of the scene so struck to their soul that they have presently proclaimed the malefactions. I'll have the players play something like the murder of my father before my uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tend him to the quick if he but blench. I know my course. The king rises. What? Try to put false fire. Right! Right! Now am I to do it? Now he's praying. And now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven, and so am I revenged. I will be scant. I, a villain, kills my father, and I, his sole son, do the same villain send to heaven. Why, this is higher in salary, not revenge. He. Kill my father grossly, still full of bread, with all his crimes broad blown as fresh as may am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he's fit and seasoned for his passage. No. When he's drunk, asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of this bed, at gaming, or swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it, then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven and his soul be as black and damned as hell where to it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. Horatio, when thou shalt ever read this, give this man some means to a king. They have letters for him. Are you are two days old at sea, a pirate, the very wall like a point would give us a chase, finding ourselves too slow to sail. We put on a compelled valor, but in the gravel I bought it. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises. And indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame that uh, seems to me but a sterile promontory. On the instant they got clear of our ship, so I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they knew what they did. I am too to a good time for them. The excellent canopy, the air, the cube. The brave o'erhanging firmament, the majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Why, it appeareth nothing to me but a foul and pestilent congregation of vapours. Let the kings have the letters I have sent, and repair thou to me with as much speed as was to fly death. I have words to speak in thine ear will make thee dumb, yet are they too light for the matter. Farewell. He that thou knowest thine, Hamlet. What a piece of work is a man? How noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form and moving, how express and admirable. 
in action, how like an angel in apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? What's someone else? That is Leot, is a very noble youth. What ceremony else? Must there no more be done? They are in the house, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may by the spring. I tell thee, Jewish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou layest holy. What the fair Ophelia? Um, trouble was for ten times trouble on the cow's head. Was wicked thee, thy most ingenious sense if I fear. Hold up, dear, so while, till I have caught her once more in my arms. Now, power does the ponder kick and there, till of this flood of mountain you have made, the autumn old pallion. For the sky shadow flew on. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis that he wanders the conjuring stars and makes them stand like wonder wounded hearers? It is I, Hamlet the Dane. Never take that sword! Good my lord, be quiet! Why I will fight it to a bold esteem until my eyes are no longer left! I left, Ophelia! I have been in continual practice. I shall win up the odds, but thou shalt not know how ill all is about my heart, but no matter. Nay, good my lord, if your mind dislikes anything, obey it. I will forestall the repair, then they are not fit. Not a wit. We defy augury. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, yet it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man knows aught of what he leaves, what is to leave the times? Let be. Sir, give me your pardon, for I have done you wrong, but Pardon it as you are a gentleman. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming of a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot mine arrow over the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature. Was what in this case, tell me most to my revenge. But in my times of honour, I stand aloof with no reconcilement till by some other masters of non honour. I have a voice and precedent of peace to keep my name on board. But till that time, I do receive your offered love like love, and will love wrong it. I embrace it freely, and will this brother's wager frankly play. Come, give us the foils. This is too heavy, let me see it. This likes me well. Come, sir. Come, my lord. What? No, well, again. And then hit, what say you? A touch, a touch, I do confess. My lord, how he 
going to now. And yeah, this arm is against my conscience. Uh, come, Diane, yeah, it's one of that you but Dally. I pray pass with the best violence. I'm sure you make a wanton of me. Say you so. Come on, have a chin down. things will happen, so shall you hear of carnal, bloody, unnatural act of accidental judgment, casual slaughters of death, put on by cunning and the false cause. And in this option, purpose is mistook, falling onto the inventor's street. <laughs> 